The Atlantic Ocean is the second largest of the world's oceanic divisions, following the Pacific Ocean, with a total area of about 106,400,000 square kilometers. It covers approximately 20% of the Earth's surface and about 29% of its water surface area. The first part of its name refers to Atlas of Greek mythology, making the Atlantic the Sea of Atlas. The oldest known mention of Atlantic is in the histories of Herodotus around 450 BC. Atlantis Thalassa the term Ethiopic Ocean, derived from Ethiopia, was applied to the southern Atlantic as late as the mid-19th century, before Europeans discovered other oceans. Their term, ocean, was synonymous with the waters beyond the Strait of Gibraltar that are now known as the Atlantic. The early Greeks believed this ocean to be a gigantic river encircling the world. The Atlantic Ocean occupies an elongated, S-shaped basin extending longitudinally between Eurasia and Africa to the east, and the Americas to the west. As one component of the interconnected global ocean, it is connected in the north to the Arctic Ocean, to the Pacific Ocean in the southwest, the Indian Ocean in the southeast, and the Southern Ocean in the south. The equator subdivides it into the North Atlantic Ocean and South Atlantic Ocean. Geography The Atlantic Ocean is bounded on the west by North and South America. It connects to the Arctic Ocean through the Denmark Strait, Greenland Sea, Norwegian Sea and Barents Sea. To the east, the boundaries of the ocean proper are Europe, the Strait of Gibraltar and Africa. In the southeast, the Atlantic merges into the Indian Ocean. The 20 degrees east meridian, running south from Cape Agalhas to Antarctica defines its border. Some authorities show it extending south to Antarctica, while others show it bounded at the 60 degrees parallel by the Southern Ocean. In the southwest, the Drake Passage connects it to the Pacific Ocean. The man-made Panama Canal links the Atlantic and Pacific. Besides those mentioned, other large bodies of water adjacent to the Atlantic of the Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico, Hudson Bay, the Arctic Ocean, the Mediterranean Sea, the North Sea, the Baltic Sea, and the Celtic Sea. Covering approximately 22% of Earth's surface, the Atlantic is second in size to the Pacific. With its adjacent seas, it occupies an area of about 106,400,000 square kilometers. Without them, it has an area of 82,400,000 square kilometers. The land that drains into the Atlantic covers four times that of either the Pacific or Indian Oceans. The volume of the Atlantic with its adjacent seas is 354,700,000 cubic kilometers and without them 323,600,000 cubic kilometers. The average depth of the Atlantic with its adjacent seas is 3,339 meters, without them it is 3,926 meters. The greatest depth, Milwaukee Deep with 8,380 meters, is in the Puerto Rico Trench. The shortest point between the mainland of two continents through the Atlantic is from Cabrus, Senegal to approximately Tauros, Brazil measuring just 2,839 kilometers. Cultural Significance the Atlantic Ocean was named by the ancient Greeks after either Atlas the Titan or the Atlas Mountains named for him. Both involve the concept of holding up the sky. Transatlantic travel played a major role in the expansion of Western civilization into the Americas. It is the Atlantic that separates the Old World from the New World. In modern times, some idioms refer to the ocean in a humorously diminutive way as the pond, describing both the geographical and cultural divide between North America and Europe, in particular between the English-speaking nations of both continents. Many Irish or British people refer to the United States and Canada as across the pond, and vice versa. The Black Atlantic refers to the role of this ocean in shaping black people's history, especially through the Atlantic slave trade. Irish migration to the U.S. is meant when the term the Green Atlantic is used. The term a Red Atlantic has been used in reference to the Marxian concept of an Atlantic working class. 
as well as to the Atlantic experience of indigenous Americans. Ocean floor. The principal feature of the bathymetry is a submarine mountain range called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. It extends from Iceland in the north to approximately 58 degrees south latitude, reaching a maximum width of about 860 nautical miles. A great rift valley also extends along the ridge over most of its length. The depth of water at the apex of the ridge is less than 2,700 meters in most places, while the bottom of the ridge is three times as deep. Several peaks rise above the water and form islands. The South Atlantic Ocean has an additional submarine ridge, the Walvis Ridge. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge separates the Atlantic Ocean into two large troughs with depths from 3,700 minus 5,500 meters. Transverse ridges running between the continents and the Mid-Atlantic Ridge divide the ocean floor into numerous basins. Some of the larger basins are the Blake, Guiana, North American, Cape Verde, and Canaries basins in the North Atlantic. The largest South Atlantic basins are the Angola, Cape, Argentina, and Brazil basins. The deep ocean floor is thought to be fairly flat with occasional deeps, abyssal plains, trenches, sea mounts, basins, plateaus, canyons, and some guyos. Various shelves along the margins of the continents constitute about 11% of the bottom topography with few deep channels cut across the continental rise. Ocean floor trenches and sea mounts. Puerto Rico Trench, in the North Atlantic, is the deepest trench at 8,605 meters. Laurentian Abyss is found off the eastern coast of Canada. South Sandwich Trench reaches a depth of 8,428 meters. Romancha Trench is located near the equator and reaches a depth of about 7,454 meters. Ocean sediments are composed of pterogenous deposits with land origins, consisting of sand, mud, and rock particles formed by erosion, weathering, and volcanic activity on land washed to sea. These materials are found mostly on the continental shelves and are thickest near large river mouths or off desert coasts. Pelagic deposits, which contain the remains of organisms that sink to the ocean floor, include red clays and globigerina, pteropod, and siliceous oozes, covering most of the ocean floor and ranging in thickness from 60 minus 3,300 meters. They are thickest in the convergence belts, notably at the Hamilton Ridge and in upwelling zones. Orthogenic deposits consist of such materials as manganese nodules. They occur where sedimentation proceeds slowly or where currents sort the deposits, such as in the Hewitt Curve. Water Characteristics On average, the Atlantic is the saltiest major ocean. Surface water salinity in the open ocean ranges from 33 to 37 parts per thousand by mass and varies with latitude and season. Evaporation, precipitation, river inflow and sea ice melting influence surface salinity values. Although the lowest salinity values are just north of the equator, in general the lowest values are in the high latitudes and along coasts where large rivers enter. Maximum salinity values occur at about 25 degrees north and south in subtropical regions with low rainfall and high evaporation. Surface water temperatures, which vary with latitude, current systems, and season and reflects the latitudinal distribution of solar energy, range from below minus 2 degrees Celsius to over 30 degrees Celsius. Maximum temperatures occur north of the equator, and minimum values are found in the polar regions. In the middle latitudes, the area of maximum temperature variations values may vary by 7 to 8 degrees Celsius. The Atlantic Ocean consists of four major water masses. The North and South Atlantic central waters make up the surface. The subantarctic intermediate water extends to depths of 1,000 meters. The North Atlantic deep water reaches depths of as much as 4,000 meters. The Antarctic bottom water occupies ocean basins at depths greater than 4,000 meters. Within the North Atlantic, ocean currents isolate the Sargasso Sea, a large elongated body of water, with above-average salinity. 
The Sargasso Sea contains large amounts of seaweed and is also the spawning ground for both the European eel and the American eel. The Coriolis effect circulates North Atlantic water in a clockwise direction, whereas South Atlantic water circulates counterclockwise. The south tides in the Atlantic Ocean are semi-diurnal, that is, two high tides occur during each 24 lunar hours. In latitudes above 40 degrees north some east-west oscillation occurs. Climate Climate is influenced by the temperatures of the surface waters and water currents as well as winds. Because of the ocean's great capacity to store and release heat, Maritime climates are more moderate and have less extreme seasonal variations than inland climates. Precipitation can be approximated from coastal weather data and air temperature from water temperatures. The oceans are the major source of the atmospheric moisture that is obtained through evaporation. Climatic zones vary with latitude, the warmest zones stretch across the Atlantic north of the equator. The coldest zones are in high latitudes, with the coldest regions corresponding to the areas covered by sea ice. Ocean currents influence climate by transporting warm and cold waters to other regions. The winds that are cooled or warmed when blowing over these currents influence adjacent land areas. The Gulf Stream and its northern extension towards Europe, the North Atlantic Drift, for example, warms the atmosphere of the British Isles and northwestern Europe and influences weather and climate as far south as the northern Mediterranean. The cold water currents contribute to heavy fog off the coast of eastern Canada and Africa's northwestern coast. In general, winds transport moisture and air over land areas. Hurricanes develop in the southern part of the North Atlantic Ocean. More local particular weather examples could be found in examples such as the Azores High, Benguela Current, and Nor'easter. History The Atlantic Ocean appears to be the second youngest of the five oceans. It did not exist prior to 130 million years ago, when the continents that formed from the breakup of the ancestral supercontinent Pangaea were drifting apart. The Atlantic has been extensively explored since the earliest settlements along its shores. The Norsemen, the Portuguese and the Spanish were the first to explore and to cross it systematically, from Europe to the Americas as well as to its islands and archipelagos, and from the North Atlantic to the South Atlantic. It was after the voyages of Christopher Columbus, Indiana, 1492, at the service of Castile, that the Americas became well known in Europe and European exploration rapidly accelerated, leading to many new trade routes and the colonization of the Americas. As a result, the Atlantic became and remains the major artery between Europe and the Americas. Scientific explorations include the Challenger Expedition, the German Meteor Expedition, Columbia University's Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory and the United States Navy Hydrographic Office. Around 980 to 982, Eric the Red discovered Greenland, geographically and geologically a part of the Americas. In the year 1000, the Icelander Leif Erikson was the first European to set foot on North American soil, corresponding to today's eastern coast of Canada, i.e., the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, including the area of land named Vinland by Erikson. The Norse discovery was documented in the 13th century Icelandic sagas and was corroborated by recent Lanzo Meadows archaeological evidence. Around 1010, Thorfinn R. Karlsefni led an attempt at Norseman settlement in North America with 160 settlers, but was later driven off by the natives. His son, Snorra Thorfinnsson, was the first American born to European immigrant parents. In 1419 and 1427, Portuguese navigators reached Madeira and Azores, respectively. From 1415 to 1488, Portuguese navigators explored the western African coast, crossed the equator, and reached the South Atlantic. 
the southern hemisphere, and the Cape of Good Hope in the southern tip of Africa, entering the Indian Ocean. In 1492, Christopher Columbus crossed the Atlantic Ocean and discovered a new world, which led to the European colonization of the Americas and the first transatlantic trade route. From 1496 to 1498, John Cabot made three voyages to North America from Bristol, landing in Newfoundland and, or possibly the Canadian Maritimes. In 1500, Pedro Alvarez Cabral reached Brazil. In 1519 Ferdinand Magellan sailed from Spain to the South Atlantic, navigating the straits named after him and entering the Pacific Ocean. In 1524, Florentine explorer Giovanni da Verrazzano, in the service of the King Francis I of France, discovered the United States of America's east coast. In 1534, Jacques Cartier entered the Gulf of St. Lawrence and reached the mouth of the St. Lawrence River. In April 1563, Nicholas Barr and 20 other stranded Huguenots were the first to build a boat in the Americas and sail across the Atlantic. They sailed from Charles Fitt, South Carolina to just off the coast of England where they were rescued by an English ship. Though they resorted to cannibalism, seven men survived the voyage, including Barr. In 1764, William Harrison sailed aboard HMS Tartar with the H-4 timepiece. The voyage became the basis for the invention of the global system of longitude. In 1858, Cyrus Westfield laid the first transatlantic telegraph cable. In 1865, Brunel's ship the SS Great Eastern laid the first successful transatlantic telegraph cable. In 1870, the small city of Ragusa became the first small lifeboat to cross the Atlantic from Cork to Boston with two crew. John Charles Buckley and Nicola Primorak. In 1896, Frank Samuelson and George Harbo from Norway became the first people to ever row across the Atlantic Ocean. On 15 April 1912 the RMS Titanic sank after hitting an iceberg with a loss of more than 1,500 lives. On 7 May 1915 the RMS Lusitania was torpedoed en route to Queenstown, Ireland, at the loss of 1,198 passengers. 1914-1918, during the Atlantic U-boat campaign of World War I, more than 2,100 ships were sunk and 153 U-boats destroyed. In 1919, the American NC-4 became the first seaplane to cross the Atlantic. Later in 1919, a British aeroplane piloted by Orcock and Brown made the first non-stop transatlantic flight from Newfoundland to Ireland. In 1921, the British were the first to cross the North Atlantic in an airship. In 1922, Portuguese aviators Sacadura Cabral and Gago Coutinho were the first aerial crossing of the South Atlantic on a seaplane connecting Lisbon to Rio de Janeiro. In May 1927, Charles Nunglesser and François Collet in their aircraft Le Soblong mysteriously disappeared in an attempt to make the first non-stop transatlantic flight from Paris to New York. In 1927, Charles Lindbergh made the first solo non-stop transatlantic flight in an aircraft. In 1931, Bert Hinkler made the first solo non-stop transatlantic flight across the South Atlantic in an aircraft. In 1932, Amelia Earhart became the first female to make a solo flight across the Atlantic from Harbour Grace, Newfoundland to Derry. Northern Ireland, 1939-1945, during World War II, the Battle of the Atlantic resulted in nearly 3,700 ships sunk and 783 boats destroyed. In 1952, Ann Davison was the first woman to single-handedly sail the Atlantic Ocean. In 1965, Robert Manry crossed the Atlantic from the U.S. 
to England non-stop in a 13.5-FOOT sailboat named Tinkerbell. Several others also crossed the Atlantic in very small sailboats in the 1960s, none of them non-stop though. In 1969 and 1970 Thor Heyerdahl launched expeditions to cross the Atlantic in boats built from papyrus. He succeeded in crossing the Atlantic from Morocco to Barbados after a two-month voyage of 6,100 kilometers with Ra2 in 1970, thus conclusively proving that boats such as the Ra could have sailed with the Canary Current across the Atlantic in prehistoric times. In 1980, Gerard de Beauville was the first man to cross the Atlantic Ocean rowing solo. In 1984, A.M.Y.R. Klink crossed the South Atlantic rowing solo from Namibia to Brazil in 100 days. In 1984, five Argentines sail in a 10-meter-long raft made from tree trunks named Atlantis from Canary Islands and after 52 days 3,000 miles journey arrived to Venezuela in an attempt to prove travelers from Africa may have crossed the Atlantic before Christopher Columbus. In 1994, Guy Delage was the first man to allegedly swim across the Atlantic Ocean. In 1999, after rowing for 81 days and 4,767 kilometers, Tori Murden became the first woman to cross the Atlantic Ocean by rowboat alone when she reached Guadeloupe from the Canary Islands. In 2003 Alan Priddy and three crew members made a record crossing of the North Atlantic in a rib from Newfoundland to Scotland, via Greenland and Iceland, in 103 hours. Economy The Atlantic has contributed significantly to the development and economy of surrounding countries, besides major transatlantic transportation and communication routes. The Atlantic offers abundant petroleum deposits in the sedimentary rocks of the continental shelves. The Atlantic hosts the world's richest fishing resources, especially in the waters covering the shelves. The major fish are cod, haddock, hake, herring, and mackerel. The most productive areas include the Grand Banks of Newfoundland, the Nova Scotia Shelf, George Bank off Cape Cod, the Bahama Banks the waters around Iceland, the Irish Sea, the Doggerbank of the North Sea, and the Falkland Banks. Eel, lobster, and whales appear in great quantities. Various international treaties attempt to reduce pollution caused by environmental threats such as oil spills, marine debris, and the incineration of toxic waste at sea.